Signs of the Southland, Monday, June 3rd, 2024. Welcome, everyone, to a blend of Georgia Tech numbers and words. My name is Akshay Ishwaran, and joining me this afternoon on a dry, a potentially hazardous water environment uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, are Jack Purdy and Jay Grant. How are you doing today, gentlemen? It's been four <laughs> days. Fine. It's been four days. I Nary do, a I drop of water to drink. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's Pro fine. to this weekend. Pro to this weekend. The weather was pretty good. That it was. It was yes. Good. It was yes. very temperate. Good for being outside. <laughs> that it was. Um, that if it anybody was. wanted to go down the, the water slide that was West Peachtree, I did see footage of people going down it in like the shoot the hooch tubes. That's the innovation that that this city was built on. So. Absolutely, that's just the modern version of you know the Ramblin' Raft Parade or Ramblin' Raft yeah. Race. Oh, yeah. I'm already <laughs> in Rec Club form. The Ramblin' Raft. Parade. <laughs> we got to bring it back. Yeah. It died. In, it died in the '80s because of dangers and also dangerous water conditions. Uh, back yeah. then with the Chattahoochee, it's time to bring okay. it back. I, except in I've the never city heard. I, I, I've never heard of this, but that does sound hilarious and also potentially. You gotta, dangerous, yeah, so, you gotta yeah. look this up okay. now. We're gonna we're gonna riff. I think it was, you gotta go look. You know this what? Up on I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna riff. I, I think, and this will be me plugging the alumni association. I think it. They just did either a, like a news online or a like a magazine article about it. So very timely stuff. Um, in terms of in terms of bringing it up, yes, it was most certainly stopped due to many different types of danger, including water, heat, germs, uh, yeah, logistical danger. It never count out logistical danger. Um, I, I'm on the alumni magazine website, and I got I got I got to quote a couple things here. It was dubbed the quote Woodstock on the water and the quote Rose Bowl on the river. In 1978, yeah. the Guinness World Records declared it the largest participatory sporting event in the world. With more than in the next year, it had 400,000 spectators and 70,000 participants. How did I not know about this? This is mm -hmm. incredible. And it yeah, lasted for funky. 11 years. This picture, this picture is stunning with just how many people are on this thing. Like the the the, the Woodstock on the water feels matches perfectly with the picture that they put up on here. Uh, this is awesome. Kristen Rat. I do uh, love when you Google this. One of the results is a Reddit thread from last year on the Georgia Tech subreddit that asks, the Ramblin' Raft Race, why was this stopped? And then the replies are just a <laughs> bunch of quotes of the Wikipedia article <laughs> and just enumerating every single possible reason well, as to why this should not have continued to be a thing. Right. It's great. Uh, all it's right. Great. Thank, you for thank you for introducing me to this. This is... I'll have to dig in. It's great. Um, let's get into some news. Let's start with football, shall we? A couple of official visits up for the 2024 football season um, and a couple of good recruits uh, in-house as the Edge Center gets reconverted into the Fanning Center. Uh Georgia Tech football got its top target center in Jimmy Bryson, a three-star, and it also collected uh, a visit from safety Duke Dinkins out of Warner Robins, a school that we've seen a lot recently, I think, in Georgia Tech's recruiting ecosystem. Jack, you put this uh, stuff on our, uh, our notes here. Any mm -hmm. other commentary on this? Hey, for Bryson, that was that was our top guy. That was the, the that's who we were looking for. Um, he I mean, he had more recruitment than he could have done. He just stopped it right there and then, like he's in. So I think that's 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 nice that for our offensive lineman head coach that he got the main center that he wanted, which is really cool to see. Um, that he's able to convert his 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 specific position into what he wants, which is I think that's good to see. Uh, yeah, Duke Dinkins, we got to commit for him as well. He was, I think, further down the line in his recruitment, but we got him. It was a bunch of official visits this weekend, um, so there's more names that will probably come out of the pipe soon. Um, but that's those are the uh, those are the notables. Getting a center is big is a big deal, so I like that. Doing a mini yeah. construction corner here. Do you think they're showing them the renderings of New Edge Ooh. or the like actual construction site? Both, which I mean, is more interesting. 
They drive him. They, they take. They take him to Bobby Dodd. Like they're gonna see it. Like it's not. They're not gonna not. But it's it's also something you can sell. Hey, by the time, like, okay, okay. right, right, yeah. My, That's a good point. The, the lore of Jake. When I yes. was in middle school, the high school sporting teams came to my high school and the music program and the clubs and all that to like recruit us or like, like wow, when you get to the big school, you're gonna have so much fun and there's gonna be so much to do. You know that kind of thing. Right. And I remember the swim program and the water polo table being like. By the time you're done, the new pool is going to be done. You're going to be able to enjoy it. And do you know what's breaking ground next week? Oh, I remember you talking about this when yes, they announced the, it. Yeah. that pool. <laughs> so there's a difference between the hopes and dreams. Maybe you'll have something cool, snake oil, or maybe real, yeah. or maybe it's done in 10 years. This is like, hey, that thing is going to be done soon. Not maybe not soon, but like college kid era. You can at least see within the, their the like within their college careers, right? They might not yeah. get to oh, use yeah. it the first year, but by the second year, they'll be it'll be open and they'll be using it full time. Right. Yeah. And they'll... so that it's why we have a recruiting uh, recruiting facilities arms race in this sport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Almost certainly. Uh, let's flip over to another fall sport while we have a minute. Some more signings. For the volleyball team as they look to build on top of their Sweet 16 appearance this past year. Mira McCool out of Birmingham, Alabama, and Lydia Zhang from Marietta, Georgia, joined the 2024 class. Jack, any you had some conversations with people in the know. Any more commentary mm -hmm. on this one? Yeah. Um, the, a big thing here is they're – they lauded both of their uh, academic achievements uh, for both both these girls. They're going to definitely raise the uh, the GPA floor of the team, and I think Tech very especially takes pride in having high GPAs across the board uh, as much as they can. So that's like, honestly a selling point here. Um, but also, I mean, we, Mira at Middle Blocker right side is going to be good because uh, you remember last year we lost Liv Mogers for a while, and Middle Blocker was a little bit yeah. of a problem spot for us. And so just having any more depth and competition there is, is, is good for us to just bolt bolster that as well as we can. Uh, Zhang, Lydia Zhang, probably not going to, probably not going to see much playing time for her considering we've got a couple other, uh, and, and Lauren Sandin, Sandin and uh, Emiliano there as the libero defensive, defensive specialist and stuff like that. Um, so, but more, there's more stuff there. Um, we've still got a spot they're going to try and fill, which is basically the replacement for Smiley Man Yang. Um, to, to compliment Eloise Suarez on the right side when she's in her for her one set serving rotation. Um, don't know who or where who that person is or where they're going to come from, if that's another freshman or more transfer, how, whatever. Um, but either way, it's a big, that, that's, it could get, we've also got Sofia Velez, who we mentioned before, who's going to be defensive specialist. So like Lydia Zang will be more in the Zoe Winford role of like, she's obviously there. She is not, probably not going to see any reason, any important points save for when we're up 15 at the end of a set or something like that. Um, I have, okay. The, but the big stuff is I have schedule news, which I am sure y'all are biting at the bit for, because we have only three new teams uh, involved here, which has altered the number of ACC games we will play. Uh, which, oh, this is going to be great for schedule was, for schedule nerds and schedule modeling. To be clear, for more context yeah, here, yeah. Jack has been teasing this to us for the past probably thirty minutes. He has not told <laughs> us any of these. No, um, he's not given us any indication other than just now as to who these teams are. Um, so basically, you're getting our live, slightly edited by the time I get done with this reaction to who some of these opponents are. So, yes. Jack. Floor is yours. So the number of ACC games was technically already out there because Louisville's schedule has been out for about a month now. So there are 20 ACC games this year, which is up, I believe, from 18 in the past. Eight, eight. So, so it wasn't 20. Um, so there's more games now. Um, our home opener is going to be a team playing their first match as a member of the Big Ten. So we are playing a new Big Ten team. They wouldn't tell Easy. me who. But we're playing Easy. one of them. I'm going to speculate four. wildly. I'm going to speculate wildly. Can oh, I do for, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I not... think it's going to be UCLA okay. simply because we played them relatively recently, and they're they're hashtag good. Um, yep. So yeah, that that's my wild speculation. I have no nothing to back this up, but that would yep. also be a banger of a home opener. So yep. 
Twenty five percent chance to get that one right. So yeah, one in four. One, one, yeah, one in four. It's probably yeah. It's gonna be Washington. Probably not. But you never know. Could be Washington State. Could be Washington State, and they're not bad. Washington at all State's not a big. Ten. You mean Washington? No, you mean oh, that's Washington right. That's right. Twice. They stayed. They stayed. They started. They stayed. They stayed. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. They um, won a nice, Washington, hefty settlement Washington out heavy. of the big Big Ten. Washington um, heavy. Yes. Um, other P four games we will play a Big Twelve team, and we will play an SEC team that is not Georgia. We we're also playing Georgia. We're still playing Georgia, right? Yeah, we're still playing Georgia. That's gonna be the fourth oh, okay, weekend. Yeah. That is to be the fourth weekend of the season. We get Georgia. Um, uh, that would be what they start the season first it, or the like the second week of school, so probably the last week some, of August, something so like that. Yeah, the end of September. Yeah, um, and that will be at we're at Georgia this year, so that will that will be over no, there. I, that's lame. I think it's gonna be it. I, they worded it to where. I, I think that there's it's us Georgia and another as in the other SEC team there akin to how we did that thing with Arkansas all the time, so it might be that arrangement. Um, okay. Again, um, but that's that's the thing. Uh, I mean, I we're gonna get we're we're gonna get Stanford in some form or fashion. Like Louisville's already got them on their schedule. There's no way we're not also playing them uh, as well. So uh, where or when, don't know. Um, but. The ACC has generally put very good matches at the end of the season, so I would not be surprised if we were playing any of Pitt, Louisville. Well, we know we're not playing Louisville then, actually, because we already that match already came out. We know it could be any of Pitt, Stanford. S- I mean, SMU is not bad either. Um, Miami again, I don't know. Florida State again, I don't know. But seems like that's what they're pointing towards is a good match to finish the season. Interesting. Um, I mean, all four of those big new Big Ten schools, I think, have decent programs. Obviously, UCLA and USC are probably the best out of that bunch. I think Oregon is pretty decent too. I, I I'd have to check the yeah. tournament field again, but I I think to Coach Kali's point, every year they ask for the hard schedule now these days, uh, and yeah. they're usually getting it. I would so, not be so, yeah. I I don't know. I did not ask about who, if or when we'll be in McCamish. I assume they want to do that again. I should have asked that that as a secondary, but I would not be surprised if they because we don't play Georgia at home this year. If they want to put that, if it's UCLA, put that UCLA game in McCamish because um, that'd be that'd be a fun one to put there. Yeah, um, it'd be also be interesting to see if they. I think the format that they did with homecoming the two years ago mm-hmm. was actually pretty, it was kind of smart, right? You get, you sort of draft off of homecoming right? The, yeah. the, the next day, basically. I think it being the day after instead of the day before, probably I'd, I'd quibble with, but regardless, I think you might see that kind of format come back. Well, um, I, I think the getaway day on Sunday is is a bit tough. You, you got to do like yeah. post mini five. That was rough, like a seven it, eight p.m. Type it was thing. that. It was also during a foot like during NFL as well. So that's yeah. that. That's a hard sell. The Friday versus Georgia, I think, was a better, a more approachable game for people to do. Um, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I has built agree. In. I like the Friday. We, made it feel like an event. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we talked about it, right? Like it made it feel like an event, given the opponent, the venue. The, yeah. the crowd and also the fact of how it fit into the schedule. Right? It's a home opener. It's the first time you're seeing this this group on campus. Like I yeah. think a format like that and using the, and drafting off of homecoming weekend will help um, in the same way that it did versus Pitt. I, I think that'll yeah. really, really help. It'll be interesting. It'll be fun. The schedule is coming out very soon, they said, so so we've got that to still look for. This is just what we got now, but if it's not out in the next couple of weeks, I'll be quite surprised. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's move on. Track and field. One update from the East prelims for the NCAA championships. Uh, Emil Wilson has qualified for the big show in Eugene, Oregon. She's the 18th seed in the women's long jump uh, with a seed length Seed length, seed distance of 6.26 meters in that long jump. The The format is a little interesting. Uh, I didn't really understand a, a ton of it. I just kind of copied and pasted it here. Uh, but it looks like she is 12th in the first flight. So first round 
uh, and the best nine after tie-breaking across both flights will advance to the finals. So uh, good luck to her. Those NCAA championships are from June 5th to the 8th, so at the end of this week. Uh, so, And I imagine they'll be on ESPN Plus every day. The, the NCAA website had a bunch of links to where you can uh, check those out. Gentlemen, let's move on to one of our topics du jour. Let's talk about the NCAA baseball tournament. Uh, the NCAA regional in Athens was this past weekend. Tech, uh, I mean... To say that they were true to form this season, I think, would not be too far from the truth. Uh, In game one, they, game two of the regional, game one for Tech, they posted a scoreless 9-0 loss to UNC Wilmington, which means they dropped into the loser's bracket versus Army, a 4-2 win. Pretty convincing 4-2 win there. Uh, And then followed that up with a... Really good 3-1 victory uh, versus UNC Wilmington as they advanced to the regional final to play their blood rival. And this is where the story gets very, very squirrely and complicated. Jake, I want to go to you first. This is exactly what this team has done the last two times it's made the postseason. I, I, Emotionally I complicated. I can't Emotionally remember the exact <laughs> staging of the, the Vandy in Tennessee, but there was some Indiana State in there. There's, uh, you know, the, the loser's bracket was involved in all cases, but really, Georgia Tech led just about this whole game. They went down early 2 nothing, came and battled back 5-2. They had the opportunity to get more runs several times, including so many times. multiple multiple bases loaded situations with one or no, or some low number of outs. Um, you know, UGA just kept chipping away at the lead one run at a time over the last, uh, what, did, what was it? All the last three innings or three of the last four. I think it was sixth, eighth and ninth were, were the exact innings that they got, that they got runs in, but all that to say doesn't really matter. The, the outcome that went five, five tech had the opportunity to win Peyton green grounded out on what, likely would have been ball four, uh, let's say. And then, uh, which again, with the base load, would have ended ended the game in Tech's favor. Um, UGA puts up three in the 10th, and I think everyone from here knows how that went. Yeah. A final score of 8-6 in the 10th inning. Um, I think uh, our, Jack put up a screenshot of our chat right after the game <laughs> went final. Uh <laughs> A that that pained sigh and that exhausted sigh from Jake, I think, kind of sums up. Yeah, kind of sums up where everyone is at. Just about every tweet I saw, most of our replies to our uh, the updates we were posting throughout the game was just like, "Danny's got to go." Danny's like, "When? How long does this have to be the case?" People tagging Jay Bat, like, "What? What are you going to make the move? It's time to make the move." Um. It's just that it sucks that it's like it's been like this over and over and pre and predates us from when we got to campus too. Um, so I've seen plenty of fan accounts out there who I love seeing just being like, "Hey, here's the here's here's his resume stacked up to guys who are losing jobs now." Um, it's a, a weird case. It, it's funky. Um, it sucks. I I want to note that these Army and UNCW wins. We're only our second and third wins of the year with scoring five or fewer runs, which that's totally how we thought we'd win baseball games in this tournament was by scoring a few runs and pitching enough to hold the hold the leads. Um, and we damn near nearly did it against Georgia, but I think all of us knew there was no way we were holding them to five runs. Uh, no, no. when it was all said, it, it, runs. it felt like exactly what we thought was going to happen would happen, right. at least for me, I, honestly, for me. The only thing that would have made it more, this is how I thought it was going to play out, would be that three-run uh, spot coming in the ninth and, and tech yeah. hitting in the next. Right, now, I, yeah. and, and that yeah. feels very nihilistic to say. I yeah. don't like that that's my reaction, but it very much, they're they're led by, I mean, again, don't like giving them their flowers, but they're, they're led by the probably best player in college baseball and a great turnaround story, no matter if you like right. them as a team or not massively successful team that's one all year yeah. there's yeah. a reason they're hosting they 
I, Tech played one of the games close that occurred in the regular season, but they did not look good in, on Friday or Sunday for that no, matter. No. Uh, I don't know. I, I again, I hate to be nihilistic about it, but I, I like it felt like exactly what was going to happen happened, and, and it, that's yeah. that's frustrating. You know, bases bases left loaded so many times. I mean, we had Burris up in the in the ninth with bases loaded. In the bottom of that, we were in the home team in this game for NCAA tournament reasons, um, and which I like, still think is dumb, even though it benefited us here. Uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah. that out there, T- totally agree. Um, you would, yeah, you'd think Burris up less than two outs, bases loaded to win the game. You'd think you'd you'd be in good shape, uh, and we just weren't. We were he. There was a pitch that was right in his sweet spot where he usually hits dingers, and he left to go by for 0-2, and he fell behind the at bat, and there that went. Um, we're just not swinging at good pitches, letting good pitches go by. Like it was just so annoying that whole that end of it. Um, they were right there. They were right there. I I I, I think Jake, we had the same like if we were it, mathematically and situationally, we were one hard hit ball from pulling it off. But or did we, did, a, a, a taking a ball, <laughs> or taking you know? a ball. Yes, or taking a ball. But did either of us have a lot of hope or true true deep belief that? that was actually going to happen? I don't think so. And I don't think much of this fan base really did either. Um, well, and that's the spooky thing is the hitting yeah. has never been the problem. It's right. never been the problem. Right. There's no reason for that to be the case. It's not logical. It's not sensical. It makes no sense that our brains would do that. And yet, here we are. Yeah. It, right? Like one I, way, yeah, one way or another, we knew the juju was just not going to work. It was not going our way. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, it, it sucks. Um, I know I've said that about 18 times during this segment. Actually, get me out of this hellhole. <laughs> let me... Uh, I mean, nothing that I have is going to be particularly soothing, but let me pull some quotes from uh, our friend Chad Bishop at the AJC uh, in his recap article of the Athens Regional. Um, quote, Coach Danny Hall's program hasn't made a super regional since 2006 when that team advanced all the way to the College World Series and has now finished in second place at a regional 10 times since 2007, end quote. Quote, after 31 seasons and more than 1,200 wins at Tech, uh, Hall now goes into the final year of his current contract that was signed on April 1st, 2022, and ends June 30th, 2025. If Tech were to terminate that contract before July 1st, Hall would receive 75% of his $510,000 base salary. If Tech were to terminate that contract after July 1st, Hall would receive a 60% payout of his base salary. End quote. So uh, there's another quote in here from Jay Bat, uh, the athletic director, that mentions that um, there will be an end of season recap meeting uh, with Coach Hall uh, and They'll they'll evaluate everything, right? I mean, this entire yeah. all of the quotes here are, hey, we're gonna evaluate everything, we're going in the right direction. It's it's kind of the stuff that you'd um expect that he would say, but uh, a couple of other notes that Chad also put in. I know I'm basically reading a bunch of Chad's article and you should read the rest. It's it's very poignant analysis of the current situation. Uh quote Hall also brought in Pitching coach Matt Taylor, but Tech staff had one of the league's worst ERAs, 6.48. It gave up nearly 10 hits per game and finished with a whip of 1.61, which ranked 11th among ACC teams. Tech didn't have a single pitcher with an ERA under 4.0, end quote. So, Michael Cobb, the numbers are exactly out at 4.0. There. The, yeah. Yeah. Technically correct. Best kind of correct. The the numbers are out there, right? He has one more year of his deal. We just talked about his buyout structure. Um, Jake, I want to go to you first. One more year on deal. Let's say you're Jay Bat. You do not want to uh, accumulate more debt uh, considering where Jeff Collins just left you. Uh, and potentially where a hiring a new basketball coach left you, what do you do moving forward? And if you retain him, what do you want to see in 2025 to extend him past that point? Well, for those who are not as 
you know, watching every baseball game, following the ups and downs and kind of tune in, tune out as, as the whims of their, their hearts go. We really did think, and I think on good reason that, you know, the, the, how do you say that the end of uh, the, what was it? 21 or 22 season? Akshay. Two. I think it was two. Okay. I I thought it was 22 as well, but I'm going to, I'm going to pull it up now because I want to get the exact, the exact sequence right uh, in terms of the games. Do, 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 Tennessee. Yes. Okay. So Tech went on the road to play at Akron in May and at Kent State before heading to Pitt. This is significant uh, because Danny Hall came up in the in the Midwest. He started his coaching career, head coaching career at Kent State, uh, you know, 1988 through 93 uh, before he was hired over at Tech after after Jim Morris left. That was also, uh, for those that recall the roster, Akshay, you know where I'm going with this. Do you want to inform the people? He does. He does. Hold on. The roster that had both of his sons, or at I, least I, the I last of his sons, yeah, that was it, graduating. It, it, it was just Colin Hall, I believe. Um, yeah, but the last all, all of his say, that was graduating. It was a hey, this feels like it could be the retirement tour, and I, I say all this to say he deserves that way to go out. Yes. Say yes. what you will. Yes. About like not living up to imagined expectations that quite frankly, yeah, tech probably has kept up reasonably decently well in baseball compared to other sports. But let me tell you, they're not at the top of those lists that friend of the pod, Tony Altamore puts out uh, in, in terms of <laughs> investment in baseball. So, right. you know, maybe a top 16 team or seed every year uh, and, and making a super regional every year is unreasonable. I think it is. But getting there more often than every 18, I think, is also reasonable with the amount of sheer talent that has come in. All that said, if they are to retain Dan, like I said, I think he deserves a retirement tour as much as I am like, ah, uh, I saw yesterday coming a mile away. I saw this weekend coming a mile mm-hmm. away. I was kind of surprised he even made a tournament based yeah. on just numbers I was looking at. Like just, at, you know, and, and it felt like playing with house money. And that's the fun part of postseason baseball right yeah. there. I, I think we can all remember the NCAA softball run that that Tech had a couple of years ago, that Tennessee regional, even though it was frustrating, the Fandy regional. Oh my gosh, that Fandy regional was fun as heck. You know, like it. it yeah, you're all, still all, there. Had, all, all had memorable games that were just fun oh, to yeah. in, in the moment. Like Shoot. you knew we, we were, uh, yeah. were underdogs, yeah, but like still, those were exhilarating moments to live in. Though he's like, holy crap, they're here and they're really putting up a real fight mm-hmm. against a team who yeah. should wipe the floor against us in most games. Which, which to your point, it's like they. This team and in all of its and, makeups has never quit on him, right? We've never no, used it, the yeah, Q word on this. Good point. Good point. And they're always in the fight in these games, especially in these situations that we're talking about. And and I think that's, and he deserves that's the thing to retire too. on his own terms. He ret- he deserves to retire on his own terms. He's a Hall of Famer for a reason. He's yeah. amassed these wins for a reason. Yeah, they haven't punched up quite as much as they have been. And they they have, I mean, they've missed a couple tournaments over the last eight years. It's not, that's not any ifs, ands, or buts about it. Again, I think a really good team with really great potential in 2020 probably didn't get its due, but we talked about golf last week, so we don't need to rehash that again. They've been consistent-ish enough that it's not, it, it, it like anybody who's going in and saying like, this is terrible is spinning a narrative i i personally feel and and yeah maybe i, I missed the the glory days of you as you will of, of you know 90s early 2000s georgia tech georgia tech baseball i just wasn't around then straight up but like they've been yeah. pretty reliable he's been getting in good talent there's been like good you know generally good vibes slash press they've developed assistance like you, you got you know kids coming back or or former pros coming back to be involved with the program. That's the kind of thing you want to build. It's just that end line hasn't been there. And for whatever reason, the pitching has just not every show up. Yeah. Out every year. And how Burrell and, and now Taylor, you know, like it, it's, it's baffling to me. It is, it is beyond baffling, but all that said, he's got one more year on his contract. Give him the send off he reserves. And I, I saw this comment 
I think it was on a tweet uh, of ours, but just how like Jack Leggett still hangs out at Clemson. Do mm-hmm. that. Like, like yeah. have him be the GM or the advisor or like the coach right. yeah. emeritus or or some sort of like like the like Danny Hall. Like I, I don't I wouldn't want too much like cooks in the kitchen, but like you don't it's it's not a black and white situation here. There are ways to do this, I think, or ways to to see things happen. That that really do make sense, and and I'm still baffled. What happened to Terry Busey? What happened to Cam Ball or or Cam right, Hill? Right, you know, like yeah, yeah. those are weird problems. But also, we kind of walked into this last year by allowing Danny to retain. You know, of course, we wanted to retain Ramsey and whatnot, but to sorry rehire uh, a new pitching coach because you can say like, oh, it was the first year. He was still figuring stuff out. He was working with you know players he didn't recruit and all that. Mm-hmm. And, and to be fair, like Cam Joe's coming across town, worked worked work out generally. Yeah. Like I, you I, know, I, and, yeah. and that is one of his you know a, a player that he can hang his hat on. So I don't know. I feel like I didn't really, um, I didn't wind up at the spot I thought I was going to get to when I was because I knew we were going to talk about this today. Yeah. Right? I, yeah, I knew that this was going to come up on the podcast. He deserves to go out with some sort of shebang. There's a way to do it that's not a unceremonious goodbye Jeff style, like punting off into the ether, you know, and, and, and that's not what should happen. You know, like the, yeah. there's, it, it's, there's so much gray area to this that I think the, it, it yeah, it, it's frustrating, but there, like I said, there's no, there's no, there's no perfect or only way to, to move on into the future. If that makes sense. I think I agree with you on every point. Like you don't, for a guy that's been around this long and has given this much of himself to the Institute, like you, 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 you have to do better than, all right, yeah. thanks for the years. Next yeah. guy in, like, you don't, you don't do that. Um, that's tech tech is a classy institution at its, at its core. And I think they do. There's just no way that that would go over well with any of us um, at all. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, like, yeah, the guys keep fighting for him. The guys love him. Like playing for Danny Hall is very much still a unique and, special experience in the college baseball world that that's been true for a long time regardless of how the results have gone like if you get to come play for danny you know you're going to be in a good spot you're going to be at a treasured program that has historically produced really good players in the pros um yeah I, yeah i think the the send-off year feels like absolutely the right move and probably the only move here right now at this point um that gets you both a the, the the good parts of, uh, uh, the good parts of making sure Danny has his time in the sun and time in the spotlight with at, at the end of his run, but also allows time to make a clear transition into the next era of tech baseball, whatever that may be. If you want to just crown Ramsey or do some something else, I don't know what. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's uh, uh, for all the uh, very understandable uh, just aggravation last night after whatever that whenever the game was two nights ago last night. Um, like that, that those are very valid, I think, feelings for us all to have as a fan base. Like, we're still here. Come on. Like, can we do something else? Um, but that's all perfectly valid. But yeah, once we take a second and think about it, like, if he's got another contract year left, sure, we may not win as much as we theoretically could with someone else at the helm, but there are some things a little bit more important here. Um, and that is making sure that one of the Institute's most famous people ever gets the right kind of send off. So, and, Based on the history book I read that Jake sent me, uh, we we have a history of making sure we have proper send offs to tech legends. So, uh, doing that I think is important. You don't want to Paul Johnson the situation here because this would be that on uh, the scale of like you anchored the you know the pillar of, of, of right. like local yeah. college baseball. Like that's yeah yeah absolutely. And I think yeah, case, that, you mentioned, that poisons like, the well. Like you're totally yeah. right. That absolutely yeah. poisons the well completely. You you will kill your program, uh, I, and I more or less. I don't think that that's an exaggeration. Um, you have to do this the right way, uh, and yeah. let it for better, like for better or for worse, is a bad way of framing it. But you have to let him retire. Yeah, he's he's earned it. Yeah, and it's not like we're like. It's a terrible team for anything like that. Like we're still yeah. in the tournament. We're still fighting for this stuff. Like he he is perform like we were performing better than most teams. We're performing as well as we want to. No, obviously. But in the end, like we still were one of the thirty two la- final teams in the NCAA field when it came down to it yep. this year. 
Those uh, those points matter in the director's cup, you know. Yeah, Plus yeah. The top the golf, that's that's nice too. Uh, hey, hey, hey! Spoiler, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. We'll <laughs> we'll get there. It's the transition, uh, bud. I teed you up for it. Where's this more know? baseball? We're not done with baseball. We're oh, really? Not done with, oh, yeah. Not done. done with baseball. I got more notes. This is why you let me drive the bus, sir. Uh, speaking of more baseball news, Drew Burris finished with 25 homers on the season. That is tied for second in program history with Kevin Parada. I one behind, believe. one behind Parada, one behind Parada, one behind Parada. Parada is the leader at number one. That's why Jack does the stat tracking and I just talk on this podcast <laughs> or the stat collecting. Excuse me. Actually, both of you do the stat collecting. I don't really do anything. Why don't you just replace me with an AI? Anyway, <laughs> uh, Terry Busey and Carson Spathia. Terry Busey, we mentioned earlier, uh, both uh, have been uh, entered into the transfer portal. Um, so we'll hear, we'll eventually get more news about them. In terms of ACC performance in the NCAA tournament, it's a uh, hit or miss. Uh, Wake Forest, despite throwing Chase Burns uh, in their elimination game, got punted out of the tournament. Duke got punted out of the tournament. FSU and UVA, both of those were hosts, uh, regional hosts. So they're still in. I think UNC is still playing right now. Clemson survived a couple of scares. Obviously, mm-hmm. Tech is out. NC State uh, has also advanced uh, to the Super Regional round. So, again, hit or miss uh, the SEC. And it's, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call Texas and Oklahoma affiliates at this point. Um, they're pretty strong. I think this is going to be a very ACC and SEC dominated Super Regional field. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. We're just, it's, I don't know. I, I, I saw some argument against the sec bias of the ncaa baseball tournament i'm just i don't know man i i I have mixed feelings on the dominance of one conference across multiple sports but it it is what it is you know it is what it is also the southeast is just good at baseball right it's like southeast is quite good at baseball there's a reason the southeastern conference has good baseball teams. Like, also, all of these ACC teams are also recruited from the Southeast. So right. it's, it's like, n- it's not, it's not, it the, matters. Yeah, yeah, it's not Boston College and Syracuse. So, yeah. Would be very concerned if that was the case. Hey, uh, Boston College was a good program last year. I mean, that, they also beat Tech year this year. Coach, so maybe I shouldn't. Syracuse also doesn't have a baseball team. So, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, both of those are really pedantic points. My apologies. Point. You're right. You're all right. All right yes. Technically Let's correct to... is the best kind of correct, sir. I applaud <laughs> you. you. Let's move on to your segue. Let's talk about the NCAA golf tournament, specifically match play. We talked uh, earlier, I guess last week. When was, That was a that was weird week, fever yeah. dream when we did that podcast at like 10 p.m. Uh, and I was half asleep uh, talking about Hiroshi Tai winning the individual title for NCAA men's golf. I and did. with that, Unbelievable. <laughs> and with that came a berth in match play as the eight seed versus number one seed Illinois. Tech made decent work of of Illinois in uh, in a three one victory. Uh, your lineup scores down the row here. Bartley Forrester won at three and one. Kale Fontenot was down, but that match was unfinished. Uh, Carson Kim a five and four loss. Uh, Aiden Tran a three and two victory, and Hiroshi Tai, of course, a, a three and two victory. And then we woke up. Uh, not even really no, woke up. We, we like no, kind no, of that progressed was the, for the rest of the day. That was that second afternoon. Half of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second half of the day around lunchtime, you basically see these like, like the the Stephen Godfrey eyes meme happen in <laughs> uh, on Twitter because. Peck announces that Christo Lamprecht is going to come back from his back injury and replace Aiden Tran to play the semifinal versus number five FSU. Interesting note on this, by the way, all four lower seeds advanced from uh, in match yeah. play. Four, yeah, five, yeah. or five, six, seven, and eight. All of them advanced. Don't know what that means. Uh, to me, it just means that match play is a crapshoot, I think. But regardless. <laughs> I have um, eight agreed. hours of Ryder Cup to dispute you with you. But anyway. Illinois lost as the one seed two years in a row. They have. They have, yeah. So, your line scores here. Barley Forrester win three and two. 
Carson Kim win four and two. Ta- Hiroshi Tai lost three and one. At this point, Tech two and one leading the match. Christo Lamprecht in his return from injury loss two and one. So it comes down to Kale Fontenot and it took extra golf to decide this match. They took it as long as they could and he ended up losing in 19 holes. That is fortunate. It took one playoff hole. So a five, a uh, Two to three loss to FSU in the semifinals. So, a, like Jake said, a top four finish for Tech at the NCAA golf team tournament. All in all, a very successful season. Again, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's hard got, to say. Yeah. It's hard to say that it's not, especially with an NCAA individual title in the bag. But I mean, let's it be is. clear. This is the best performing team we had on campus. There is an actual national title consistently, here, and they consistently. made and they made and they're NCAA semifinalists. Like average finish of three, two or two point five, however you want to put it, nationally in the two three. competitions. So yeah, um, yeah, those are incredible. Two point five tied third. Yeah, it's somewhere. I mean, two and three quarters. It depends. Something like that. It's open to interpretation. You don't. Remember, you, both of you don't pay me to do math. All right, this is too much. <laughs> too much. I do the talky, not the mathy. Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's a very successful program. It's, I think, for me as someone that I, I think Jake, you've you've talked about this before. It's like you only get so many opportunities to watch this team on TV, and then when you do, it's always intense moments, and you get very acutely <laughs> emotionally invested in every single stroke. Uh, and every single putt, and this happens to me every year, especially when this goes on the golf channel, it's high stress and high drama. And as so- and, and like I was saying, as someone that gets super invested, it's just at, at this time of year, it's frustrating. And I'm sure it's frustrating for the guys too, but it's frustrating to right. see it end like this, um, like that close to the precipice, right? A little less close than last year, but still that close to the precipice. I mean, I'd, I'd say... I- they were they 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 dropped in the rankings throughout the season. Like they were top ten and fell out of the top ten. And I think we it was we but we knew like if they get hot, you never know. And they got hot big time. Uh, Taroshi Tai got national title winning hot, and Crittenby Crystal was out, but he's still. I mean, he still played really well in that match. Like that, he was never out out of that match. Um, I kind of hate, hate that. I kind of suck, sucks oh. that Aiden Tran got replaced after he convincingly won his match against Illinois. Um, yeah, I, 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 I was. Pretty... That was an, that was an interesting move. I don't know too much about why or anything about that, but I was like, huh, okay. But then again, you have the best amateur in the country, right? No, the if fact he that says Lance... he's good to go. That's why I'm like, and, and Hepler's yeah. earned the benefit of that of the doubt there. So even though me, I'd be like, oh shoot, trans hot, like you got to play him. And, and maybe Christos back wasn't. Maybe it was at ninety nine percent because he he was a little tight down the and tight's the wrong word for it, but you know a, a little bit. You know, it, off down the back back stretch, but that's that's the sport, right? You, you try yeah. and play the best hand you're dealt, and it, it, I don't know. It's a fallacy to think like, oh, well, Tran was hot in that first round. You know, golf comes and goes. Like, no, I mean, yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. Ty with Ty wins the t- individual title. I mean, near, and even with the triple bogey on seventeen, uh, wins his Illinois match pretty convincingly, and can't pull out his Florida State match. So, like, the best of the best don't win every match, of course. Um, Forrester yeah. stayed hot, which was fantastic. Like he was able to finish his holes, his matches uh, on sixteen, in both cases. Um, yeah, no, it's just it's weird that yeah, our two best players don't win their matches, and that's what cost us the semifinal. But uh, I me- I mentioned the rankings all just to mention like these guys. It d- it didn't really matter where they sat in the rankings. They if they had a shot, they had a shot, and they made extremely good use of it. Um, and yeah, we got our first hardware in what, what's it, 07. So I'll, I'll yeah. mention one thing. And to the point about Lamprecht, I'm looking at his scores right now, the per hole scores. And it's not like he got nuked, right? No, it's not it's like not. he no, not came out and lay, like 
last year is an aberration, I think. Like last year, his match play performances across like all three sessions or four sessions were terrible. But yeah. in this, he was leading or, or ahead in his match until the very end, right? 15 is where they tied. 16 is where Clinton took the lead. And then 17 is basically where Clinton won it. So he had a, I mean, it's a, like you said, the helpers are in the benefit of the doubt and that the best golfer and or the best amateur golfer in the nation wants to play, you let him play. Right. And he, he showed it, right. He, he had a pretty good performance. It's just frustrating that variance got in the way at the end. Yeah. And, and so variance. And I, I think, you know, it's, it's tough to come back and, and play four hours of sport, no matter how good you are at it, when you're coming off what clearly was an injury. If it was keeping him out of the lineup, you know, like you can't. Yeah. If you're not playing in the NCAA championships, yeah, clearly it's that bad. So yeah, that's also a brand new course. Like it had just gotten renovated. Like everyone was learning this course on the fly, basically during this event. Um, I mean, it's the same for everybody, but just, it was another wrinkle in there outside of our very familiar course that we played at however many years in Arizona. Greyhawk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, Greyhawk was awesome. Maybe if someone had put a tech flag up at 16 just to remind them of home, uh, that would have been, that would have helped. <laughs> that would have helped. That would have been the extra push. Um, any other news and nuts from the NCAA golf tournament before we take a short break? Not from the tournament, but to mark on Chris Still Big, of our best ever. Uh, he has the now the Georgia Tech career stroke average and the single season stroke average. Uh, this was, I mean, uh, uh, potentially one of the best, I mean, of the best eight seasons ever by an individual, individually by a tech golfer ever. Uh, his career average is at 70.05 and his single season average this year was 69.16 for oh, score. This score is where record. I'd like to also add Christo himself has also earned the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, for sure, he's going to be on the Corn Ferry Tour next year. Uh, Hiroshi Tai got some, got a Masters invite uh, and I think a U.S. Open and a invite U.S. Well. Open invite. Yeah, U.S. Open. So we're going to see some Hiroshi Tai action in majors. Um, no word on if he'll like go pro or anything. He's got eligibility left. So I mean, I would, I, I, if I were him, I'd stay. But that's up to him. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we're we're, we're going to keep seeing Christo out there. I'm definitely scared when he becomes a President's Cup member of the international team and just wipes the floor over whoever we throw out there, Wyndham Clark or someone like that. Uh, sadly, I won't refer him then. But, yeah, what a year. There are so many aggressively mediocre golfers from Athens that you can throw into that U.S. team, uh, and I look forward, kind of look forward to Christo uh, wiping the floor with them, personally. <laughs> sure. uh, so that will be some catharsis for me. Uh, speaking of catharsis, we will take a quick break back in a tick yes as always this podcast is brought to you by section 103.com guys it's about to be and and you can stop me here it's about to be football season which means we need to be prepared which also means we need to stock up with Haynes king nil shirts at section 103.com yeah it's coming. It's next. We've talked volleyball. We've talked a little football. That is going to be uh, the next time we see quite a bit uh, of uh, Georgia Tech team sports. Quite a bit. What am I saying? That's the next team sport that's going to be out there. So in the meantime, Haynes King NIL shirt, Point Tech, I believe, still on the roster there as well. I'm doing this on the fly as ever. But uh, as always, check them out at section103.com, section103 on Twitter, and use code FTRS for ten percent off, and there is always free shipping over seventy bucks. Welcome back to Signs of the Southland for Monday, June third, gentlemen. Let's do a little bit of a season review for the twenty twenty three twenty twenty four athletic year. I know we still technically have one athlete in uh, in flight, but I think we have enough data points on the rest of the program sort of piece together a bit of a clip show to close out the athletic year. So here's how I want to do this. I'm going to describe the season in a, in a couple of different terms I for a, for a bunch of these sports. And I want you to give me one sentence on your vibes on the season, right? Okay. And, yeah. ma- and vibes and maybe where you think, how you think next year is going to go. What do you cool. think? 
Yes, sure. Like Sick. Let's start. Actually, let's start at the bottom of the list. Let's start with the swim and dive program. A bunch of team records this year and decent performances at, at ACCs and, and NCAAs as well. Um, I'm just going to read off all these team records because there's a bunch. Uh, Mackenzie Campbell, a 200 IM team record. Sabrina Brisson broke records at 100 free uh, and or 100 breasts and 200 breasts. Uh, Hadja Loizu had a 50 free record. The women's 400 medley, medley relay, the 400 free relay on the women's side, the 200 free relay, the 200 medley, the men's 400 free relay. All of those were team records. And Merck Kilavus, uh set a thousand free record in his distance swims as well. So, Jake, you're up first. Vibes on the swim and dive program heading into next season. Give me one sentence. Yeah. Um, it's been really nice to see uh, certain freshmen coming in and competing right away, uh, especially on the women's side. I think Sabrine Person was truly a bright spot. I'm eager to see them them build off of that. And, and with a lot of those relay records, what that tells me is there's a lot of potential uh, for that stock to go up with the right uh, the right talent acquisition there. That was a long sentence with a lot of semicolons, but I appreciate it. Have you met me? <laughs> I had, No, I've edited your writing before. This is kind of what I've come to expect. Jack, any more commentary on that? Another sentence to add, if you will. Sure. Uh, diving was good this year also. Uh, they had yeah. they, 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 they showed up in ACCs and NCAAs, so I, I would say if, if the one sentence is good to see the women's program increasing in quality and that diving was not a afterthought. Okay. We're making aggressive use of commas. I like this uh, malicious compliance in, in this format as well. Track and field. And we'll throw across country into this, in this bundle too, as all of the running sports uh, track and field decent season two. They're still alive in the NCAA championship field. We talked about it and Wilson earlier. So, gentlemen, track and field cross country. One sentence about the direction of that program. Feels like more of the same. Not many records here. No, wait, no records, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, it's a half-funded sport, and so the ceiling's only so high, but they usually don't underperform. I, I don't. I honestly don't know that much. This is, this is, my, this is my short falling, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, it's a sport that I don't think has exceeded or under... Uh, performed any expectations. I think they need more resources before I set that bar higher. And I do appreciate the amount of kids that are going through the program and, and getting good educations. And, and you you get some great, you know, individual performers. It's just you can't expect Florida State results and, and Virginia Tech results with the investment that's that's put in. I think they've got a good basis though. So so keep at it. I'm trying to stay positive with that one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to Tennis. I think we we mentioned this a lot this year. This was a kind of a season where the guys team got over the hump, right? At number seventeen seed, just about in the NCAA tournament. Yes, uh, that's not how that tournament. works. Yes, that's not how. Yeah, that works. I know. I know. I know. I was about to offer the caveat. Yes, I know. It's the the conference and this and the and the other. But, but also, also, you got to think about it more like an S curve than a than a, anyway. I, <laughs> Let me give them compliments. You do the caveats later. Tennis team. The, the men's tennis team got over the hump. The women, I think we said, okay, they're, they're a little bit lower from where they, they've been. And I think we said that last year, too. They're just a tick below. Instead of being the top 16, top 15 team, they're a top 20, maybe a top 25 team. Uh, not a ton of success in the full tournament field, but I, but I, I think overall, like they made both teams made the tournament. They made there were a bunch mm -hmm. of doubles and singles qualifiers. I think overall, this is for me where I would set sort of the floor, right? And they they have the opportunity to build on that over the next couple of years, depending on eligibility and all that. So, Jake, your first. Men's and women's tennis vibes heading into 25, 24, 25. Yeah. Eager to see how both teams reload and retool. I think, Jack. I think they're in pretty similar spots. You had mentioned, I've been tracking 
how I think of teams pointing up or pointing down. I, I had the men pointing up and the women basically even leaning upwards because as you mentioned, if they're a great floor, they will always be quite competitive. Um, we needed to see the guys take that big, bigger step, knowing Andre Spartan and, and Chopra and all of them were still here, and they did. Um, NCAA results notwithstanding, they had good wins. And and once every every one of these um, once every one of these various rankings and and stuff is out for the entirety of, of the rest of the field, we will do a, a a deeper dive on on some numbers there. But certainly the numbers belie both these, well, especially the men pointing upwards, and that's good to see. Good stuff. Let's move. I, I think we've kind of talked about baseball a little bit already in terms of a season wrap up, but. If you want to underscore anything, one sentence to do it right now, Mr. Purdy. This is a fantastic freshman of the year, and I am extremely glad we have him because that guy is awesome, and I love it when he hits balls very far, and he did it a lot. So They had a lane. They had a chance. They got some great series wins, and, and, and you know, I, I, I think the cabin, the cabinet is relatively well stocked, especially on the bat side. How's that? Okay, let's talk about the other stick and ball sport. Let's talk about softball. Finally got over a bit of a hump in that first first round, first two rounds in the ACP tournament. Obviously, they skipped the first round entirely. They started in the second round um, for the first time in a long time and advanced to the, to the tournament semifinals for the first time in over 10 time. years. Yeah. Right? Since the last golden era of, of Georgia Tech softball, their offense was Killer, uh, as Jack noted in one of his articles earlier this year after an interview with Hunter Bunch. So, Jack, since you are the, uh, the connoisseur, the coverer of Georgia Tech softball this year, your vibes heading into 24-25. I'm going to quote you here is that it felt like it was a make-or-break year uh, for just the general direction of the team, and I think they made, they made it. Uh, they showed a, they showed a true positive direction with the same basically the same cast of characters. A couple yeah. additions in there, of course, but they took that roster that had potential that was a high recruiting class and turned it into one of the best offenses in the country and one of the best in Tech's history. And Mal Black getting second team All American by Softball America is no accident in the middle of all that. So yeah, I think absolutely big point up. Hunter Bunch dark horse for most important addition to any team Ooh. at all. Dark horse. I guess you yeah, have any addition at all. Yeah. 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 Any addition. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of new additions. Uh, but yeah, I think what adding him, Eileen, adding him to, to the group was one of the best things that happened all season in any sport. Behind every great coach is usually at least one, probably more great assistant. You, you can go down the list Buster, Faulkner, James, Ramsey, Claudia, a man who we know simply as Claudia, Claudia Hunter, yes. could yeah. be. Uh, very much a part of that bunch. Don't say anything, Akshay. <laughs> Let me get through my he sentence, it which I now added it. another sentence. All that to say, they had to meet something. They showed progress and underrated, even though they didn't make the postseason. That, that you know, a couple things break differently. They do get that, but underrated. We didn't watch them on the opening day of ACC play. They made the tournament comfortably. That was nice. Arrow that was up. really nice. That's an arrow pointing mm -hmm. out moment. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. We talked about golf already, and I think all of us are kind of high on where they're going to go in 24-25. So let's switch over to women's basketball. They were in an interesting season. <laughs> I want to borrow yeah. a quote from Dennis Green. From, of the Arizona Cardinals, in which he called the team, they are what we thought they were. And I think <laughs> that is kind of the perfect way to discuss this team. They won a lot of the games that they should have, and they lost a lot of the games that they should not have won, right? Like, they, they yeah. lost them yeah. in some cases by a lot. But I think their they resume was very forward. accurate to who they were. Yes. 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 Yeah. No variance. They they kind of defeated the variance monster in this one. But to that point, they 
there were some, there were little bits of progress in there, right? We're talking about them making an offensive evolution over the past couple of years. They were slowly kind of retooling that roster from being defense first, very good defensively, to now being offense forward. Um, and I think given the, the quality of recruits that they've brought in for 24-25, actually that started at Tech like today, um, mm-hmm. I think there is a good platform on which to build sustainable success under Nell Fortner as her regime continues. So, Jack, you're up first. One sentence on women's basketball's vibes heading into 24-25. I'm giving myself at least five because you got five. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, the the core of the Guerrero Dunn, Blackshear, Morgan, uh, the, they're all st- the, the fact they're all sticking together is a big deal. Now they're going to be in the latter halves of their careers here at Tech as well. Um, and they will have they, the experience will show they are very good. The ACC is deep. They were just on the young side. They've been on the young, the very young side of things for a while here. Um, with more experience in our work at the or some better boards as well that are going to make a bigger difference. Um, the ceiling, the ceiling is it. The ceiling is going up with this team just purely by sticking together, implying more and more together. So, um, I I've got them in the. This season wasn't even in the arrow in the uh, arrow point, but I do expect it to be starting to point up by the time we're tipping off the season in November. Mister Grant, give me all the crews. That's my that's my takeaway. We're, there they, is that's a, what they're doing. The, the cavalry doing. is coming. Yeah, the cavalry is it. coming. I'm get excited. For, that, get, that, ready, that, get ready for chit chat. My season tickets. Get ready for chit chat. Mm-hmm. It's a coming. lot of good recruits in that class. Speaking of recruits, we talked about theirs earlier today. The volleyball team, a couple of big, notable wins in this season the biggest home win possibly ever versus louisville in which they made the equivalent of an nfl all pro look like a <laughs> deer in headlights and absolutely rattled in a way that i've never seen play a volleyball player looks on a, okay. on this home court um and a very very surprise win over a very good florida team to make the ncaa sweet 16 so Mr. Grant, heading into 24-25, how are you feeling about Georgia Tech volleyball? Hey, if that middle blocker means, again, the cavalry's coming, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I think this team acquitted themselves fairly well. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that they were still that kind of 1B to Pitt and uh, Louisville's 1A, if you will. But, you know, as long as they stay head above water, they're, they're going to be a team in the mix to host. And, and that's a that's a standard we really can't hold anyone else to on campus. Hardly, maybe maybe golf in that mix, but pretty rarefied air there. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, you know. This is the national powerhouse, uh, regardless of being the seventeenth seed in the tournament the last two years in the exact same spot. Uh, they they retooled. They have some of the best coaching in the country. They're getting some of the best talent internationally to come here. Um, you do not want to be playing against Bianca Berlio next year. That, that and I'm putting that extremely lightly. We are heading. I I have to see it before I before we say she's entering a Brian B a Bergman realm. But she is not getting. But she's getting better. She got better in between the during the offseason before the spring games. Like it's kind of scary how good she's gonna be. So tell her big arrow up 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 for them. And they and she got Nations League call ups too for yeah. uh, so. Or I think friendlies before Nations League, but you know it, it's all the same. It's all the same thing to me. Let's move on to our two spotlight programs. Let's talk about men's basketball first. The first year of a new regime in, in Damon Stoudemire, who came very heavily, highly regarded from the NBA. You all know this stuff. I'm repeating it in case this is your first podcast. Two court stormings and two massive victories over Tobacco Road schools, which. But an overall kind of like up and down season in much the same way as the women's team for the but with a lot more riding the variance monster. Right. Yeah. Right. Women's basketball, no variance. Men's basketball, all of the variance. They just sucked all of the women's basketball's variance and kept it for themselves. You know how you can like make it's like you can have two ways of getting to an average value, right? You can have like 
you hit like 40 or, or like around 50, you're like 52, 49. 53 and mm-hmm. like 48 like re- you hit all those numbers that are right around the marker that you want but the other way that you can get to an average is if you go zero 100 zero 100 <laughs> zero 100 yep. and that's yep. basically what men's basketball and women's basketball were respectively i think i got the order mixed up but you kind of get the point yeah yeah jack i think you had your turn jake any yeah. thoughts on on men's basketball heading into into 24 or 25 yeah i think they've they've laid some groundwork there are holes in the floor we need to patch those up but i mean for a quick turnaround and, and this is a this is a sport built off of long time relationships and 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 whatnot in in recruiting but you know I, I think just for how i guess on the fly damon was able to adapt coming back to the college game i'm i'm eager to see what him and the staff can do they they've certainly earned uh, some positive buzz now now just the consistency is what they need to to add to it it seems like they have a cavalry coming as well with the yeah. highly recruited recruiting class. Holy, so, holy yeah. moly. Yeah. That's, since when do we talk about basketball recruiting as, as right. high as it is? You know? Right. All right. And our final highlight, uh, the football team, another win versus UNC and a bowl appearance for the first time in quite a while. And Haynes King and Jamal Haynes were both quite good. I, I don't know how else to say they're quite yeah. good. And I think the sort of the centerpiece on this season and kind of the best thing that I can say about how far this program has come in the last couple of years is, well, not even the last couple of years, the last, I guess, 18 months, basically, is that they gave their blood rival, the number one team in the country, a legitimate game, right? Yeah. A legitimate competitive game that went into the that went into the fourth quarter, anyone's game. And I think that it sounds mean to say that. Like you can take that two ways, right? It's like, oh, they never do this. It's great that the little guy is showing up for the first time. But I think if you if you're a tech fan and you you understand that the sheer competitive imbalance that exists between these two teams, <laughs> you'll un and you'll un- understand that what like sheer competence and not losing by like 50 uh what was it 55 to zero or 45 to zero oh wait jeff collins did that in two consecutive weeks towards the end of his tenure Hmm. so you you get very like you you miss what sheer competence looks like in these sorts of games and i think that is the best thing that i can say about this team is that that was a surprise and honestly a delight even though that game was a loss it was a dawn. So, Mr. Grant, you're first up for our last highlight, Georgia Tech football, heading into 24-25. How are you feeling? Scared because I feel excited. Dangerous. Hey, I, I, I follow the assignment. I gave you I gave you what? Four words there? <laughs> Scared because I feel excited. Five words? I, I I think it's the clear, it's the easiest one to distill. It it, it at least for me. We've got Tyler Santucci, a highly acclaimed DC. We kept Buster Faulkner by all means, kept most of the team and its major contributors who have another year left together. And for funsies, had Eric Singleton like almost breaking track records. Like th- this team has positive energy in, in a lot of different levels. And that's that's freaky. Like I, I to the point of like, hey, maybe they'll beat FSU in Dublin. And really start things off with a bang level of, of of optimism. We can save that for a future episode, though. Oh man, I uh, we have a quarterback, and that can be all the difference. Yeah, this is it's truly an incredible feeling to know we have a guy who I'm going to play so many hours on NCA twenty five on in, in in July, who in real life is also worth a damn and is going to it can at any point win us a football game. And Buster Faulkner, also dark horse, maybe less dark horsey of most important edition on campus, uh, mm-hmm. creating the formula that Bama used to uh, beat Georgia and keep them out of the playoff. And yeah, the the, the schedule may be crazy. We may have a wacky, wacky cup year coming up, but the this arrow is pointing up in a way Tech needs very badly, and it's it's happening. Um, I have. I have accounted all of the point ups, point downs, and even arrow points if you would like me to read those off. All right, final score. Point down, nothing. I don't think we had any point downs. Uh, Evens, track and field, women's tennis, 
baseball, women's basketball, women's basketball leaning up, also women's tennis. Point up, swim and dive, men's tennis, softball, golf, volleyball, men's basketball, football. I was deliberately pretty optimistic in all the stuff I was saying because it's June and it's a long time to be kind of a bummer. I don't know that I'm necessarily internally as optimistic, particularly around a couple of those teams from the beginning, but you fair, know what? Fair. It's a good time to have a good time. We got notes, a long summer to, to notes, get scared and nervous and frustrated. No, no team that should have been good was like objectively like over, over like terrible, terrible, terrible. Like no, I mean, the, the, pe people, people stuck to their at the very least stuck to their floors of a team that we would have expected them to do. Um, well, it, I mean, men's swim was a top 25 team the entire year, but yeah. uh, you know, per most numbers and, you know, yeah, that's, like, that's something that doesn't get a lot of play. You, you, you saw some really positive growth in all, a number of other ones. I think that's a good place to leave it. I'm very eager to see how the director's cup stacks up this year. Uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because that's actually the next site that I went to because <laughs> I wanted to oh, provide good. an update. And, and I've just found out that there is no more recent update. The next update is next week, actually. Wow. Uh, right. We have content which, for next week. Stinks. Yay. Yeah, that's a lot of sports that are actually getting factored in. So I, I imagine, let's see, in the final winter rankings, um, I'm going to do from very quick searching and poor podcasting. Uh, TAC was 113th or tied for 113th in the winter rankings that or the final winter rankings that are from April 25th, because that is winter. Um, and the next set of rankings incorporating all of these spring sports come out on, on June 11th. So I imagine given baseball, soft, well, baseball won't be for until the college world series, but softball will get some play. I think a little bit, um, you'll see golf get double the amount of play just because the individual title and the, and the going that far in the, in the team tournament, tennis will get a bunch of play. So I imagine you'll see them crawl out of that. Uh, uh, one thirteenth spot with a quickness. I think the highest we have seen Tech be in the Directors Cup in sort of the Jake and Akshay era, if you will, is I think fifty fifth, right, Jake? I think that was Something the like that. summer. It was like the summer after we complained to Todd Stansbury that all of the programs were doing very poorly, and he answered a <laughs> question on a podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like the immediate summer after that, and we talked about it. it was great. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll talk about the we'll talk about the Directors Cup next week. Talk about, I guess, the remainder of the baseball tournament next week. But this is kind of it. Uh, we'll, I mean, we'll we'll talk about the track and field results too. I mean, Wilson and and the long jump at NCAA's. But for for the most part, it this is it for the athletic year. And uh, it's been, I mean, it's been long enough that I had to like go back through notes to remind us what to remind mm -hmm. myself what. It's a long season this year. So it's a long season. It's a long year. It's a long year, and we're near the uh, right near the end of it, gentlemen. How about we uh, we end with some trivia? Let's talk more yeah. postseason in our trivia segment, shall we? Yes. Yeah, so the theme this year or this week? Wow, this year it has been a minute since we've done this. Is postseason yeah. play, gents? We've hosted some home games. You know, not too many. Most of them are neutral. That's not so interesting. What is interesting to me is, given a certain time that we've spent on this podcast discussing certain people, I'm sure you can guess who the, the winningest all-time postseason coach is in, in Georgia Tech history, right? By sheer volume of games won? By sheer volume of games won. That is a oh. good good call out. Well, okay. Well, yeah, base, I mean, if it's not Danny, I'll be kind of surprised here, but I could be wrong. It is Danny. It is yeah. Danny. He's 102 and 84 all time. This includes the ACC uh, yeah. postseason as well. That is 102 and 84, um, 102 of Tech's all time, 492 wins. So over a fifth there, uh, while there only go. 84 of the 503 losses. By win percentage, there are a handful of coaches with no uh, postseason wins. The only one with more than two, though, is Bernadette McGlade, uh, who was really dealt an unfortunate hand uh, against some early ACC powers. Uh, do you know the winningest football coach by percentage of all time? Win percentage. By all-time games or postseason wins? Postseason games. Postseason games. It's Paul. 
Nope. It's no, not. it's not Paul. It's definitely not Paul. Uh, ooh. Uh, is it Bobby? Yes, it is Bobby Dodd. I'm giving you guys uh, two for two. Let's to go. Start. Two for two. So I never win this game. He's the second highest among coaches that I call qualified because we've got we've got Bobby Ross who's two and zero. Oh, and granted, one of those wins may be one of the most important games Georgia Tech has ever played in any sport. Yep. So mm-hmm. good job, Bill Curry and Bill Fulcher also. Uh, one and O oh, and Mac McWhorter one and O. Oh. Good job, F- football coaches with very unmeaningful playing sizes. Uh, but if you had to guess, this coach has a slightly higher win percentage than than Bobby Dodd mm-hmm. on a forty-one and twenty-one all-time postseason record. Huh? His son was in the news last year. Maybe that'll help. Son was in the news last year. Sheldon? Yes. Hey! It's Brian hey, Sheldon. Let's go. Four, 41 and 21 in 62 official games, a 661 win percentage all the time. Do you know, take a wild guess, what Georgia Tech's winningest by win percentage, uh, actually not by win percentage, by total wins, sorry, uh, of all time season is uh, of any athletic calendar year. It's going to be recent because, you know, got to be post having a full complement of sports. But do wait, you wait, know no. what? Georgia Tech's winningest season is in the postseason. Just oh, uh, okay. Just uh, just by the number of it, games, sheer um, number. Like we're still doing a coach, or just the entire the year of the entire institute? No, the the whole athletic year. The whole, the whole the, athletic all sports uh, rolled together. Okay, uh, was it the year volleyball got to the lead eight? Whatever that was, twenty one two thousand four. Oh, okay. 2005 is Georgia Tech's all time winningest postseason. They went 22 and nine with a wow. seven and win percentage. Went 21 and 14 uh, for a 600 win percentage in 2009, 2010, uh, which I think colloquially is probably regarded as perhaps Georgia Tech's best uh, top to bottom season in, in all sports put together. You have 03, 04. Notable Final Four run uh, in there as well at 20 and 13, uh, 05 and 06. They went 18 and 12. It, it tails off from there. Of course, this does include, um, you know, ACC games and, and and things of things of that nature. You know, there's some years where Tech only had one football bowl and that and that was that was it or, or a very, very mm-hmm. small handful. Uh, 1984, 85, when Tech was 14 and four uh, is their best win percentage with a meaningful sample size there. Um, Not to belabor this point, I don't want people to get bored, but I have two more that I want to ask. First one's obvious. Winning a sport all time uh, in in the postseason. Winning a sport all time in the postseason? Mm -hmm. You say this is obvious, and now I'm blanking. That's not good. How does he throw? Why does he throw us off like this? By volume, it's incredibly obvious. Oh, it's just by win percentage. Baseball. It's, it's still yeah. baseball. Okay, still baseball. Okay, yeah. okay. By yeah, win by percentage. Yeah, by win percentage, it's probably what you'd think too. If you think about the theme of the other answers so far, football. So, yeah, football won enough games. Oh, they're no? third. They're third. Behind oh. Baseball at second. Number one is come on, guys. Oh, volleyball. Tennis. Women's tennis. Oh, yeah. duh. Yeah. Okay. No. Women's okay. tennis. And then, perhaps my favorite, uh, by volume, Tech's winningest all-time team, any opponent. And keep in mind, ACC play is included in this. Wait, but wait, wait, just the most most postseason wins of most any... play, most postseason wins. Any team. it's still not baseball. Like no, 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 no. By like opponent, opponent. Oh, against a team. Most okay. postseason oh. wins against an opponent. Oh, and you're. Shuffling your fingers like Dr. Like it's Dr. good for Nable. a really niche narrative of mine that may predate me knowing you, Jack, but in the, college I was very... NC State. State. It is NC State. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> it's the niche net. We talk about this all... It's either NC State. It was either NC State or Boston College that came to mind, but I remember we've had this conversation regularly where we just sort of like, man, NC State doesn't win championships in anything. The who, only thing that they do anymore. is trash. Who, who it's we would, a, it's cross it, country. And we would play them if we Just got through Georgia, too. Like, we would have had another version yep. of this if we got through yep. it. Yep. Uh, okay. The largest one with uh, meaningful sample size wasn't as fun. Syracuse, 6-1 and one for an 857 win percentage. Not not quite as fun as 
you know, just get, getting a nice dunk in on, on NC State. All-time Tech uh, has 30 wins out of 57 tries against NC State and 28 uh, against North Carolina, but that's on 67 tries. So <laughs> a, a, a little bit less fun being <laughs> being underwater there. Tech's uh, played out of non-conference teams, uh, not including Maryland, since they were formerly a conference team. Alabama, the most times in the postseason, all-time they are 14 and 10 in 24 attempts against non-ACC uh, related, uh, I guess, you know, Alabama at the, at the top of the stack there. Is there anything that you want to know? I, I, I Otherwise, we can wrap it up and go from there. Well, that was a lot. I think we're good. I just, I think okay. my last note would just be the 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 arc of Georgia Tech success is pointing upwards athletically now. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I, we said it in a lot of very specific ways, but it, at, for people that cheer for Georgia Tech and want to see it just success be successful athletic success is important to like the rest of the institute being popular and things like that and eyeballs and all sorts of things and there's so many things happening outside of athletics that are helping this narrative as well so um well this is a sports yeah. podcast this is one part of a very large hole that is generally pointing tech in a great direction going forward so um yep this yeah. is only occasionally a sports podcast i mean sometimes we've talked about restaurants or planes <laughs> or trains or automobiles. We talk a lot about a yeah. specific automobile, don't we? Trees. We talk about trees and parks and things. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, yeah, we've got the Stanford said. Cardinal a lot. They are an ACC <laughs> rival now. They they are in fact an ACC rival. This is this is true. Um, I meant to check. Do we know if UNC wound up uh, winning? Do a quick uh, this is here. ACC rivals. This is from the Rumble Seat After Dark. UNC and LSU are currently tied in the ninth inning. Oh, sounds at, like I should uh, go watch that. The end of that game <laughs> at three. So yeah, have, have fun with that one, UNC. Uh, but speaking for us, I hope you had fun, gentlemen, playing along with our year in review, our trivia, and joining me today, Mr. Grant. Where can the people find us online? Yes. As always, you can find us at fromtherumbleseat.com. Email us fromtherumbleseat at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at FTRSblog, at jgrant98, and at Jack Nicholas. You can find Section 103 at Section 103 or Section103.com. Use code FTRS for 10% off. Tell me, sent you. We appreciate it. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at From the Rumble Seat. And you can find this podcast wherever. Find podcasts are distributed. Rate, review, comment, subscribe. Do all the stuff. We appreciate it. Tell your friends. And in the meantime, good night, good luck, and go Jackets. Oh,